Okay, this is Alkesh again, and this is where we had left the last shot. And I'm going to delete everything we have here. Um, we'll uh, bring in the next set of uh, uh, nodes to create fire using um, particles, and then we'll walk into the uh, the Harry Potter chess set. Um, Eric has done uh, a very nice video on this on uh, their channel, on Ion's channel in uh, YouTube. But I'm just going to very quickly demonstrate um, how the fire is built very quickly inside of Fusion. So here you have the particles. We are going to leave this to sphere for now and the velocity, I'm going to increase the velocity going upwards because this is fire. So when I play, you see that the particles are rising and maybe 100 frames is a uh, very big uh, life for what I'm trying to do here. All right, so we have now this uh, rising of the particles. So that's a good start. Now we need the fire look. And for that, I'm going to change a couple of values here in the style. I don't need points, but I'll bring in a bitmap. And then I have an, an input here for image. And I'll use fast noise again. And again, this is the same method that uh, Eric is using. So do look at his tutorial. It's much more in depth than what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to change the size to uh, 64 by 64 and also if you look at my image here it's uh, too square I don't need this uh, sharp um, boundaries so what I'm going to do is bring in a mask and this mask is I'm not going to attach it yet I'm going to bring in very quickly a round shape mask attach that to the image and then change the soft settings to have softer edges and because this is fire I want some of the uh, kinetic energy of its own so I'll actually increase the seat rate here so that when you play you can see that there is some sort of animation in the color values here alright so this is good for now and what I'm going to do is look, take a look at the um, oh yeah let's look at the particle node and connect this so now you have these particles and they are rising and they don't look anything like fire um, but it, they are off to a good start believe me so what I'm going to do first is change the transparency mode here from Z buffer to a, uh, a quick sort should be fine the second thing I'm going to do inside the particle settings is uh, under style I'm going to bring the color controls and color over life would be good so the first one is going to be a uh, orange second down the road a uh, few frames of the life it should be a uh, little bit of darker orange and then the third stage I'm going to call it a complete dark or uh, smoke like stage okay so now I have something that I can turn into fire by a few other t um, jacks so now the very first one here the first color what I'm going to do is uh, bring the alpha down so you will have a glowing effect at the uh, at the very base where the fire is uh, supposedly very hot and I'm going to do the fade control here so that the uh, the fading of the particle image is uh, happening inside the particles so at the bottom and also we just did at the top so we got some particle effect here showing some sort of a fire and you can bring further changes by changing the uh, the contrast and the brightness here so if I um, reduce the brightness you can see that you have more details inside the uh, uh, inside the fire which you can further enhance by increasing the contrast very quickly you are able to bring something like this to life which is uh, you know sometimes very useful in the uh, compositing stage you're going to see this effect in uh, in the comp that uh, I have done here um, which is chess so what we have is a number of fires that I had built uh, in the same way that you just saw but I also created the light effect to have the reaction of the fire and, and you can see that as the fire is flickering the light on the wall and the light around the character here is also flickering and that's done by uh, using the combination of uh, a point light and the particles rendered image um, to uh, to create the flickering um, 
probe. And I'll show you, you know, how I did that. And also, I uh, will walk through the uh, uh, this uh, mist coming inside the uh, inside the room. So let me just bring this comp first and show you the 3D aspect of this comp as to what it looks like in the 3D viewport. So this is how the scene is built. Um, you can see that uh, I have applied the texture of this uh, image that you saw earlier. This image here. Um, I have applied the texture of this image onto the uh, uh, the geometry, which is just purely pillars. These are just two cubes inside of fusion. The wall in the back here is just an image plane. The ground here um, is also just an image plane. Then you see this vertical plane where I have the uh, the white team of the chess pieces are applied to, so that they are upright. And then I have on the other side the uh, the, the black pieces also are on the image plane. The chessboard itself is an image plane. So these are just all image planes and the geometries that I brought inside of um, Fusion from their own primitive. And then you see this particle effect here that's uh, coming from the window. It's actually, there is nothing on the other side of the window. It's just that uh, inside I have created these particles that uh, using the same techniques that I just showed you for fire, um, I just didn't apply uh, a very hot color to this. So if I affect this by light, you can see all this uh, near fi final form. Um, okay, so the first uh, set of nodes here that you have, um, these are all the 3D geometry nodes that we are not going to walk through because you have seen this a uh, few times that I have done. Um, what we will look at is this effect here that you see that there is fire and then there is a re reaction of this fire uh, by way of this light on the character and it's the same thing for the wall so it doesn't matter where we look at you know we'll just uh, start here so what I did for um, uh, for fire I created the uh, fire particles that you saw in my previous um, uh, example uh, and I created the emitter at this 3d location so if you pull any of the emitters here so this one for example is right here and then this one is right there and the third one is uh, well this one is right here so one two and three then I instant them on the other side so here is one which is on the other side that you, you can't see but there it is um, this one is also on the other side in the middle and then you see this one here is uh, this particle node here is this particle. So now I have six fires um, around the uh, around the chessboard. And I did the fast noise and the masking that you just saw. Then what I did, I, I created two uh, aspects of that. You know, I, after I did all that uh, forces that I wanted, this is a directional force here, and this is the particle render. After this particle render, uh, in the previous shot where we did the leaves, you know, I had merged them into the scene. Um, what I did here is I did merge them into the scene so that I can have the physical fire here in the 3D um, settings. But then I also did a render. And this render is basically just showing you in a very low um, resolution, you know, what the fire looks like. So if you look at this one here, that's another fire. It's a very low resolution. If I get the checkerboard out, you can probably see some faint fire here. Um, and this is happening for all the particles that I did. You know, here is one more. And here is another one. So all the six fire that I needed, I created um, a very uh, representation of it by way of quick rendering. Well, the reason for that is that I needed to create this fire effect onto the characters, right? So the, the light effect. And the way um, I do that is by creating the point light. So here is a point light that is right at the location of the fire. But this point light must behave as the fire is behaving. So if you look at this second point uh, that's on the other side, this po point light here, this point light is 
at the physical location but but its light has to be controlled and the color and the intensity would need to be controlled by the fire itself and there is a very nice workflow inside of fusion for that that i think i have done this once or twice in the um in the previous uh, videos but i'll walk through again um so what you have here is a um point light that has something called the uh, modifier so if you go to the modifier here, there are four modifiers for this particular light. And I'll just open all of them first and then walk you through what they are. So what I have done for this fire, I took the image of this render here. Let me create a two viewport so you can see it properly. Um, this one here. It just look straight at this and I'll bring this render node here. So you have this rendered fire and if I use this light and use this rendered fire or the, um, uh, the pixel so to speak to control the values of my R, my R, G and B and also my luminance which is right here if I can use this light to control all of them you know then all the values of the light that you will see here will change according to the change in this image so if I play this very quickly you will see um, that these values are changing at every frame now it's having a very slow playback because of my other processes going on but you, you get the point that at every frame depending on how this rendered image of the fire is you know that's going to affect the uh, the lights intensity and the color values which would then uh, show off on the uh, on the surroundings because that's what lights do now you have additional control here to uh, change the way this light will behave so you can that the default setting is not no decay but I changed changed that to linear decay and then I um, had the control here to see how far will this light affect the uh, surrounding geometry and depending on the, your situation, you can have it a very far-fetched effect um, or you can have a very faint effect. It's really up to you. But that's the control that I use. And, and that's what I have done here six times. So you have the six nodes here for the actual fire and then you have the six nodes here for the actual light. And they are connected in a way that they are working together to give you this, uh, this effect. So um, the same thing is happening here at the wall. Uh, it's the same type of concept that you have a fire here, which is right here. So if I look at this fire, that's the, um, the actual particle emitter. And this is rendered again, you know, just uh, here. And that's the rendered image of the, uh, of the fire that you see in this corner here. Let me just bring it in the center. And this image is then is controlling this light here. So you can see that you know as the fire is flickering, this fire here, this um, uh, values are changing. So that's that. And the other aspect is this mist here, and that's really nothing different than than other particles. The only thing I have done here is change the color. I mean, you see that it's the same setting. You have the mask going into the fast noise, which is controlling, and fast noise is again the same size, 64 by 64, and it's controlling the, um, the particle shape itself, and then they are rendered, and I have this two instancing. Now, one thing I did uh, when I instanced, because I needed to move this particular particle away from the origin uh, after I instanced I went into the region and then I de-instanced this uh, transform controls offset controls so that I could actually move without you know affecting the original uh, position it's very easy to do you just right click and say de-instance so that's that and uh, change the direction and the pace and the velocity to um, to bring some uh, motion into these particles um, and uh, yeah that's pretty much all uh, that I have done inside of fusion to um, to create this shot so again you know it's it's uh, remarkable how you can change the way things uh, should look at the compositing stage and, and in this case there was nothing to um, to begin with 
all I did was uh, just use a couple of images to uh, to make this shot and everything was done inside of Fusion. So if you don't have access to any other software of you're trying to very quickly show um, what the final scene is going to look like, you really don't need Maya or uh, any other software, even Photoshop at that stage, you know, you can very quickly do something like this. Alright, so that's that and in the next video we'll look at the effect of these particles using the uh, dusty road and also the leaves on the ground which I'll just quickly walk through because we just did that uh, as a live demo. Alright, thanks a lot.